Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Supernatural episode 1310 titled Wayward Sisters, which premiered Thursday, January 18th, 2018 on the CW. I'm recording the same night. It's been probably about three hours since the episode has uh, aired. Um, so with that said, guys, huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders up on screen. Take a moment to remind yourselves of those. Also, guys, huge reminder that this is meant to be the backdoor pilot for the Wayward Sisters spinoff that they have hopefully planned and hopefully we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to try to do this in 10 minutes. So let's start the 10 minute clock and let's begin with what happened in this episode. Uh, so timeline wise, we find out that it's been three days since episode 1309, technically three days since Sam and Dean have been missing. Um, so there's that, even though Dean thinks it's only been two, but Jody says it's been three days since she's heard from the brothers. So there's that. So huge episode reminder is the fact that it is wayward sisters, um, huge emphasis on these group of women and with their main mission being try to find and save Sam and Dean Winchester. So there's that. So episode breakdown, uh, pretty much picked up on two, um, storylines going on. Specifically, the episode is mainly focused around wayward sisters and the introduction or the further introduction of these characters um but you got two different um locations i guess you could say so the first one being with wayward sisters so this deals with them in um south dakota um Sioux falls um and then the second one deals uh, with um within the bad place which is meant to be set in an alternate universe um not just in another world so in regards to the first storyline with Wayward Sisters, um, Supernatural fans know who these characters are, but since this is meant to be the backdoor pilot, we are introduced to Claire Novak while she is on a werewolf hunt to rescue a young girl. She takes on three werewolves by herself, completely badass, might I tell you, and Claire hunts alone, so that's another thing as well. Also, we see and are introduced to Sheriff Jody Mills as well as, well as Sheriff Donna Hanscom. Jody is the one that takes all takes um, Claire as well as Alex Jones, who is introduced as uh, a part-time nurse. Uh, she takes them in, provides them a home after um, the supernatural has kind of ripped them away from their original homes. Um, so there's that, and then Donna has just been um, someone that um, Jody has befriended and has gone grown close to because of their mutual friends of the Winchesters. Now, Alex Jones, I mentioned, she's a part-time nurse. Um, she's kind of a part-time hunter, too. She doesn't hunt like Claire does, but she does provide assistance to Jody in regards to whether it's um, doing the dishes or whether it's um, researching on monsters or stuff like that. Next, we get Patience Turner. She was introduced um, earlier this season in 1303, and she is the granddaughter of psychic Missouri Mosley. Uh, Patience has just started to come into her psychic abilities. Um, she has come to find Jody Mills, who she met in 1303, with the bad news that she has had a vision where Claire is going to die. So um, that's kind of why she decided that she needed to do something about these visions. So she went to the one person who could help her out, and that is Jody. So there's that. Also, we have a newcomer once again, um, Kaya, uh, the Dreamwalker introduced in 1309. Um, she is the key to finding Sam and Dean since it, she was kind of, I guess, the bridge that um, opened up the worlds, um, which Jack has access in the previous episode, but caused everyone to be split apart. Um, so there's that. So you got introduced to all these different women, and together they come to try to find a way to get Sam and Dean back. They know he's, they're in the rift to the bad place. They have to get them out before the rift closes, but they find that there's a bunch of these creatures from the bad place that have come through the rift. Um, so they're battling their way through them as they try to get to the brothers. Now, over in the bad place, I don't really know what to call it besides that, but we get Sam and Dean trying to find their way back to the rift so they can get through it. Um, but they keep coming across this spear, spearman, that keeps knocking them out and tying them up and plans to feed them to this very large stone creature that we see at the very end of the episode, um, which is huge. I think that's the biggest creature we've seen on Supernatural. And so we don't, so Sam and Dean have noticed though that this is not just another world, but it seems to be in another universe where the rules they know don't really apply or they don't seem to apply. 
Um, so they try to to survive long enough to get themselves out of there. So there's that. Now the last scene of the episode shows um, the spearman who keeps knocking Sammy down, coming through the rift into our world, and re- reveals himself as, as Kaya. So, and she's just doesn't give off the same vibe as the Kaya we've known in the last two episodes. So there's that. Now, tidbit-wise, guys, uh, a bunch of things. Um, we find out in this episode uh, that Claire has about two or three scars from Hunt. She has a, a ghoul bite on her ankle. She has uh, scars on her shoulder as a result to a bar fight with a vampire when she got thrown through a window. So there's that. I think there's another one. I can't remember which. She went through them all very quickly when she was showing Kaya. But then there's also... Uh, uh, kind of a scar in the fact that uh, Claire is clumsy when it comes to doorknobs meeting her forehead. So there's that. So it's a little bit of a fun tip that Claire does have a clumsy side to her as well. Also in this episode, you'll find a, a few parallels to kind of jumpstart the fact that this is meant to be a spin-off backdoor pilot. And the fact that at the beginning of the episode, we get Jody calling Claire back home when she hasn't heard from Sam and Dean in a few days when they were on a hunt. Very similar to how the whole Supernatural series ended with, or began with Dean going to find Sam and telling him that they, he hasn't heard from their father in a few days and he was on a hunting trip. So that's kind of where this whole thing kind of started for them. Also, we go back to, um, at the very end of the episode, we have Claire wanting revenge for Kaya as she was killed protecting her and this is very similar to John wanting revenge for Mary and kind of jump-starting his career as a hunter so there's their par- parallel there as well as you get the parallel of Claire's journal we know from Supernatural that John has always had a journal it's kind of like the Bible for Sam and Dean and now we see Claire writing some entries um, writing about her day and also writing about the these women that she's come to call her family so I can see the journal popping up a lot and it's definitely kind of Claire's way of keeping a document of what she has come to face. So it was great to see right off the bat some tie-ins to how the show truly started, some tie-ins to season one in a sense. So that was pretty cool in itself. So going on to end tally or death tally, however you want to call it, uh, we get Kaya being killed by the spearman in the bad place. Later for us to realize that it's a different version of Kaya who ended up killing her. So there's that. And then also a bunch of creatures from the bad place were killed by the Wayward Sisters. Also, another question, though, was that... Um, and w- Patience Vision, was Kaya always supposed to be meant to... I'm pretty sure... Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure that Kaya was always meant to be killed. And I'm wondering if that's just because it's Kaya spearing Kaya, or if it's just some something else. But anyways, that's a question that just came into my head. But anyways, moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, I have to say that it's the fact that Kaya was ultimately the spear woman that was uh, trying to feed Sam and Dean to the, the creature, and she's the one that kind of jumped through the rift. Um, so that was a huge surprise there. I mean, I was surprised when Kaya was originally killed off. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. But then to have her be kind of who I'm thinking is supposed to be the villain, it makes me want to know more about her and kind of figure out why she is the spear woman. How is she the spear woman? Is that, is that the reason why Kaya was only able to dream walk to the bad place because she's already there or something? I don't know. Um, but I was surprised, but I'm very intrigued by that twist. So there's that. But moving on to most, uh, or the top three favorite moments I had of the episode, uh, pretty much everything was a favorite of mine. It was so great to see these familiar faces in these ladies. I think if they try to do a spinoff with all these ladies being like brand new characters, I wouldn't be as excited as I was with the setup. I mean, sure, Patience and Kaya were just introduced in this season, but Patience is connected to Missouri Mosley, who we've met in season one. Um, Sheriff Jody Mills, we've known her since season five. Donna Hanscom, we met in season nine. Claire Novak, we've met her in season four when they introduced Castiel, and then Alex, we met in season nine. Um, so it's like a, it's taken years for us to build up these characters, but I'm the fact that we got to see them again in this capacity, just to see how far they've come and where they are now, in a sense, to when we first saw them. It really has me feeling 
giddy over the fact that we get to see these familiar faces and see them kick ass as well and doing what they do and just taking charge. I loved it so much. From that, though, I liked seeing the bonding moment between Claire and Kaya. The fact that Claire is trying to get Kaya to warm up, to try to be supportive of her, try to show that I got you, I've got your back type thing. So that was great to see. It made it even more heartbreaking when Kaya sacrificed herself to save Claire. Um, so there's that. Um, also in this episode, Claire got a better understanding of where Jody's worries for her come from. Um, a lot of the times when we get Claire or Jody interactions in the past, it's always Claire telling Jody that you gotta let her, you gotta let me go do my thing. I, I gotta do it. And then Jody's like, I can't, I gotta care for you and, or I care for you. I can't change that type of thing. But Claire losing Kaya and there's the timer, um, gave Claire that understanding of what it means to truly lose someone that you promised to take care of. And it was great to see Claire get that perspective because beforehand I always got the impression that Claire wasn't acknowledging or wasn't uh, appreciative of just how much Jody has offered to her and sacrificed for her. So it was great to have that. And then I've already mentioned how amazing these women are, but I got to do a little moment with Sam and Dean. It was just that lizard feast moment that they're sharing. And then Sam's like, please tell me it doesn't taste like chicken. And then Dean's just looking at him saying, of course it doesn't taste like chicken. I'm eating a lizard right here. It tastes like a lizard. So that was pretty fun, funny, despite the situation the brothers were in. So there's that. But it's also great to see them in survival instinct mode. We know they can take care of themselves with very little um, equipment, a little, very little supplies. We've seen that, especially in um, 1209, I believe, when they were breaking out of the black site um, as prisoners so there's that but moving on to top three peeve moments i honestly can say three hours after watching the episode that i have n no peeves whatsoever i mean i kind of wish it was a little longer but uh yeah do you gotta stay with what you gotta stay so um yeah i had no problems with this episode i mean yeah i wish i could have saw a bit of jack but i knew that that wasn't the focus of the episode so um there's that but bit the fact that we didn't see Jack kind of makes me wonder if there would have been a part two. But then I, I I like how the episode went. It it was solid. It was good. I love the emphasis. I love how they're trying to build up this, the the sisterhood um, in this. So it was great. Um, but what member, mo moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode? The fact that it's Wayward Sisters. Hands down. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, random questions though. I do have a bit about that. Um, first one is... Is the spear woman Kaya from the bad place a different version of the dream worker or dream walker Kaya? Are they connected anyway or is did like the like the way I initially thought it was that the spear men killed Kaya and then the spear person that came through the rift was Kaya. So I'm wondering if Kaya had died in the bad place, did she then get kind of quote unquote promoted to being that spear woman? Or was it always Kaya who Kaya with the spear killing Kaya the Dreamwalker? Was there two Kayas or did one Kaya die to become what had killed her? That's my question essentially. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyways, next question. Is that second rift that the spear woman came through still open? Or did it close immediately after she had come came through? So there's that. Uh, next question. What about Jack? How will Sam and Dean get back to Jack, especially with Kaya the Dreamwalker now dead? And also it was Jack who amplified the connection Kaya had to get him over there. So what's he going to do? Uh, does that mean if Jack's over there, does that mean he's in a more danger because now he could go and encounter Michael of the Apocalypse world? So there's that. Uh, uh, next question would be, uh, would our world or Sam and Dean's world, would that world have research about the creatures that came from the bad place? And I, we really need a name for those creatures because I keep thinking they look like a swamp type creature but they did remind me of the predators from the alien and predator franchise especially when alex ripped the mask off and you had these weird i don't know what to call them mandible pieces i don't know but it kind of reminded me of the predator um 
or the Predalien, whichever version you want to call it. Um, and also, last question, I guess this is a huge question though, is that could this work as a spin-off series? It definitely has the potential for it. It's definitely going to be rooted in um, Sioux Falls, um, South Dakota, as opposed to um, Sam and Dean going on the road to all the different places. It's going to take place in the one city. With that, though, I could see how all of them, um, it begs the question whether or not Donna is going to be staying in town because she doesn't live there. But Jody has taken in Alex, Claire, and Patience, so they would be stationed there. Um, they would have to deal with all the creatures that came through the rift in the city or in the town. and But they can't do that every episode, so does that mean they're going to see Claire traveling uh, to nearby towns to deal with hunting cases or... They, I definitely can't see a whole bunch of different hunting cases happening in the one town. That's got to be an unlucky town then. Um, but, uh, yeah, but I could definitely see um, the overarching um, uh, story or enemy being finding the spearman, finding out that it's Kaya, trying to figure out why that is, or the connection to the, uh, learning more about the bad place and stuff. So I could see it working for sure. I just hope they have a few tie-ins with uh, Sam and Dean's part of the story. Um, so there's that. Uh, but moving on to predictions very quickly, guys. Based off the promo for 1311, we do see Donna Hanscom again. And it looks like she calls on Sam and Dean when people start going missing. And it looks like human parts are, or human body parts are being sold on the black market, in a sense. And they're trying to figure out why. Based off the synopsis for 1311, it reads that Donna calls Sam and Dean for help after her niece Wendy goes missing. The three hunters discover Wendy was kidnapped by a man who sells human parts to monsters in a grotesque online auction and race to save her before it is too late. That's just disgusting. I definitely have to say that that's a new one for us, and I like that it's new and it hasn't been seen in the 13 years we've had. Uh, all these different cases but I'm a little freaked out over the fact that it's a human that is kidnapping and cutting up all these people and then catering to the monster so they have something to chew on it's just it it kind of gives me the sense of the Benders episode in season one <coughs> and how like how really disturbing some humans can be in that sense so I'll leave it at that um, but what did you guys think of the episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and predictions about what you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I reblog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff, all found in one place. Go check that out as well. It's also connected to my WordPress account. The link for that is down below. Um, everything I post online is connected to WordPress. It's more organized over there, but it's still a work in progress, so keep that in mind. Also, if you want a detailed recap of the episode, a play-by-play, -play, if you will, check out my live journal entry. The link for that is down below. It helps me keep things organized, so if you check it out, I hope it helps you in the same way, but definitely keeps my details in order. Uh, so check that out when it comes online. Um, but I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you come back next week to hear what to say about the next episode because Donna's in it. I'm definitely doing a video for it. Um, but until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.